Hey, this is Frank Reich 92 and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some basic basing for Warhammer models. The ones I'll be showing you today are Warhammer 40k models, although I do own a few classic ones. And um, I'm going to be showing you the basic sort of dirt, dirt colour technique. Um, you can obviously adapt this for sand or sort of gravelly rubble, whatever you want. So um, what I'm going to start with is showing you the materials that you will need to do this. Um, first of all, you will obviously need your model. And um, today I'm just going to be demonstrating how to put the stone on, on just a blank base. But um, obviously you're going to want to you're going to want to glue your model onto the base before you base it, before you decorate the base. Otherwise, you're not going to have room for the model, model's feet to go anywhere. Um, so yes, I will be demonstrating just on a blank base this time. And yes, so the materials you will need. You will need PVA glue. Here I've just got cheap dollar store, pound shop, whatever your local one is. Um, it's not bad, it does a job, but it does take forever to dry. What I do is I usually have to end up using a hairdryer on it, or just leave it all overnight altogether. Um, so obviously that's your adhesive. If you're gonna, you can, um, what I've been doing is just mainly stone bases, but if you buy the uh, Warhammer 40k actual basing kit, you get a nice tub of little resin detail ones with some some screws on there, some rocks, a couple of helmets, there's a helmet there, and you also get a larger, you get a couple of larger bits, you get a couple of pots of this, and they will basically take up the whole of the base for your model, but you are not obliged to use them, it does give a good effect, if you look at this hive tyrant, you can see it's got a little spring there, it just, just breaks up the texture of it a little bit, I think it's quite effective. So. Obviously that's your extras. The actual stone itself, I can't open the pot. Oh, there we go. This is the medium basing slate tub, as well, I assume you can read. And um, they're quite big pieces. I personally wouldn't use these to completely base a model. I use them sort of, I don't know if you can see it from here, there's a, there's a stone there. And also on the lictor I showed you a second ago under its foot just to sort of prop it up and look like it's leaping. Um, that's what I personally would use those for again like the springs on the high tyrant just to break things up a bit. And the other one that comes in the Games Workshop's actual set if I can open the pot they're quite stubborn and it does actually come up come with a spare on these pots empty and I've just spilt it all over the place. Um, this is a small basing kit and these are quite uniform pieces they're quite gravelly and um, they can be good if you look at these Dark Eldar Scourges. That's what I've used on there. It gives quite a uniform, uniform gravelly look. But because my main army is the Nids, I like it to be sort of a bit rougher. So I use, um, rather than Games Workshop's own stuff, which is fantastic, but I just personally don't use it for my main army, I just use um, sort of plain builder's sand. You get this stuff in any sort of hardware DIY base place and um, it comes in massive sacks and you just uh, you have to dry it out of a, ha of a hair dryer most of the time because it's usually quite damp and so if you look there's quite a nice texture of stuff in there so that's what I'll be using today although my last option is um, some gravel my friend picked up for me but I've not found a use for that yet I'm thinking that would be sort of more for Dreadfleet sort of stuff, sort of gravel around the base of a ship or something like that. So those are your stones. And um, oh yes, the Warhammer basing kit also comes with this funky thing and it's got all sorts of nice things in it and you can sort of twist that and put it on the base or something like that. So that's that. Let's move them out of the way. But today I will be using the Builder's Sand. And I will be adding a little bit of grass. If you look at all the ones back here, they've all got a little bit of grass on them. These ones have burnt grass. My daemonets have got burnt grass on them, which is a citadel one. And it's actually the best burnt grass colour one I've found. My, this is summer grass. This is a Hornby one, I think, the sort of the model train company. 
and I personally prefer this 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 flocking the summer grass to the Games Workshop's own one but it works just as well it's just a little bit cheaper but mostly I'm a fan of uh, Sisdale product products just not in this case so I'm going to be using that one so first of all you just grab a, grab, grab your base and you just want to get your PVA glue just squirt a nice blob of it on there doesn't have to be neat just in the middle quite a healthy amount of it just put a bit more on just for good measure and you're going to want just an old paintbrush or something so you don't mind getting all gluey I've just got a plastic kids one here sort of spread that around get it evenish you don't want it going around the sides here because they will just be sort of painted just graveyard earth or um, steel, steel legion drab as it is now so just coat that nice and thick you can see because this is a cheap one it's actually a sort of withdrawing from the edges a bit it's not very good but it does its job you probably want to do this bit over something because it's a little bit messy and what I do is I just tend to just plonk that on there just even it out a bit can't pick it up again just tap it off, get all the excess off as you can see there are some patches that haven't got a massive amount of stuff on them but that's, that's, that doesn't matter, there's still a little bit of texture because obviously the base itself is slightly gradiated so that's not a problem I'm just checking there's not too many large bits on there because I don't want it to look too too clustered, too crowded I decided I don't like that bit let's fill that back in with just a little bit of sand and I'm happy with how that is so you just want to make sure that there's nothing around the edges here you can just brush it with your fingers it's PVA glue, it won't, won't really stick too much it just you can just rub it off really so let's put that away and then once that's dried, I'm not going <laughs> to make you watch that dry because it will take blooming ages. Once that's dry, you want to go in with, depending on what your terrain is, I usually use Ste Graveyard Earth, which is now Steel Legion Drab, and just coat that nice and thick with a quite, uh, quite, a, quite a chunky brush. I'd say probably one about this size, depending on what your model is. And um, you want to do it nice and thick, but not too thick so that... Um, so that it obstructs the sort of the detail you don't want it to go all gloopy and horrible so here's one I made earlier it's just a, a high uh, a guard and um, as you can see I've just coated all of the base in steel legion drab graveyard earth whatever you're still on and yeah that's that it looks quite basic at the moment but what you'll find when you're basing models is that it really finishes it off. It makes it look far more completed. It just sort of adds a layer of professionalism. And now I've done the Graveyard Earth, I'm going to go in with Carrick Stone. I can't actually remember if that's a new one or an old one. That's a new one. So that's a new one. Layer Carrick Stone. That's the one I like to use. Get that shake. And I'm going to go in with a dry brush if I can find it. Just coat that. Take a little bit off the brush. I'm just going to go in, just lightly, just lightly run it over. I don't want to make this too light, I, and I'm not worried about getting it on the feet of the model either, because um, nids they, they don't tread daintily through battlefields, do they? Let's face it. I don't mind getting a little bit of mud on their feet, as you can see actually on uh, this Turvagon. Look, it's got all muddy, muddy hooves here. But let's face it, it's a, it's a heavy creature. It is going to sink into the mud a little bit. So depending on your army, yeah, you can have it looking quite neat, quite grubby, however you want it really. However your playstyle is, your race, etc, etc. You notice here I'm not worrying too much about going over the edge. Because I am going to go over it again. I am going to go over the edge again at the end. It doesn't have to be neat. It is dirt after all. And that is the second. I mean, obviously, when you're doing a model, you can go up to about five or six layers of highlight, maybe. But on the bases, I only tend to go up to a third one. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully, you can. It's giving it a little bit more texture. I've not put any big rocks on in this case. But 
let's grab a new brush and I'm actually going to go straight for the next highlight because well I'm not worried about it looking too neat I want it to look nice and rugged I'm now going to go in with Deneb Stone I, again I have, I'm sorry but I have no idea what that is now let's just grab a wee bit of that coat your brush let's wipe a bit of it off Now you really want to only go over like the edges, like this this stone here. You really want to only go over the um, very edges of that. Obviously, it's the same concept as highlighting any other model, but in this case, you you don't have to do it as neatly. I'm I'm just rushing it really. Apart from the drying bit, each base five minute jobs tops really, and it really really does make a model look better. And there you can see that looks 20 times better than when I started already. And adding the grass again, you should really wait for it to dry, but again, I'm impatient. So what you want to do what you want to do is go in again with the PVA. You can do it from the nozzle or put a little bit on your brush. I'm just gonna go put a blob there. You see I'm not smooth I'm not smoothing the blob out this time, that's fine, because grass doesn't grow in perfectly flat perfectly flat um, things does it so what I'm going to do is actually move that about a little bit so it looks like it's grown in the natural pattern so I'm just tipping the PVA a bit and then just going you don't want to pat it down or anything just pat it off give it, give it a quick blow And what you, what you want to do with these bases is not make sh make sure you're not putting too much on there. You don't want to draw attention away from the actual model and onto the base. However, if you've got a big sort of a big space, you want to put like there. There's a rock there. You want to put something just just to fill in that gap a little bit, just so it's not too empty. It's a fine balance, but there's no rule to it or anything. It's really just whatever whatever you think looks good. And they're, the, they're your models at the end of the day. No one else can tell you what to do. Obviously within the rules. And there we go. That is standard, basic, very basic earth basing. This is probably for Rush armies. Which my army actually isn't. But um, there we go. Let's see if I can get that in a little bit better light. Let's take the camera up there a bit. There we go. Again, you can already see how much of a difference that's made to the model. And I'm just going to show you the same colour scheme on here, my Turvagon. Again, that's I made it. A, I, I coated it a bit stronger in Graveyard Earth this time because I wanted to make it look sort of a bit muddy. You can see, sort of in the middle there, that it doesn't look quite so. Um, doesn't look quite so defined. I'm, I'm going with the theory that it got all trampled up there. Yes, I, my hive trunk is slightly lacking arms still. But there we go. Same again. So those are builder's sand. As I sh showed you earlier. I've got some dark eldar here though, which are using the small slate that's provided by Games Workshop. <laughs> and obviously with the basing, the rocks, you just paint them, well, rock colour. So you obviously... Um, the, these Eldar, Dark Eldar, already had the rocks on them, as they need to balance on something. I use the same colour scheme for these squigs. Quite a uniform look, but they take up enough of the base so that it doesn't look too artificial. The burnt grass I showed you earlier, I used on these Daemonettes, and I have also used them on the bases of my fiancé's Necrons. I've been, I've done a sand, sand and dirt base for them. And it's looking quite good. I'll have to show you in another video. But, um, I'll pop in some, some um, 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 I'll pop in some higher quality photos at the end of this. I am now actually taking commissions for Warhammer work. As you can see, some of my work is here. And if you're interested, just give me a message and I'll get in contact. I'm doing painting, basing, um, any custom bits you want doing. Uh, if if you need need anything like that, just get in contact. I will put a link in the description also. 
So yes, I have been the Frank Rush 92. I hope you enjoyed my second tutorial. Please feel free to leave suggestions or anything like that in the comments. And I will, I will see you next time.